Hello, time travelers. What are vase and how do I use them in stable diffusion? I'm addressing that today. I've seen a ton of videos on stable diffusion, specifically automatic 1111, which is what I use, and I haven't found anything explaining what vase are for and how to use them. So I had to figure it out on my own. This is my look of disapproval. First found out about this when I was posting some pictures in a Facebook group and there were black spots on some of the images. Look at these examples right here. Here's without a V. See the funny little spot? This is the closest I could get to it. I think it's because I'm using a newer version of Stable Diffusion now. I don't know. Sorry, I can't show you the ones I'm talking about because it was a couple months ago and I can't scroll down forever in Facebook to find them. But compare the left one to the right one, and the right one's using a ve. And those people on Facebook told me, oh, you need to use a ve. But they didn't tell me how. Or give me a reference to anything, anywhere, at all. But I figured it out. Eventually. And now here's another example. This one has no ve, and this one has a ve. And you'll notice that the lines are sharper. Like, look around the eyes. A little bit blurrier on the left one and the, than the right one. And I didn't use any HDF scaling in these examples, just FYI. But... If you also look like around here and around there, things are different. And if I go left and right in this image viewer called Earth in View, you can see how vastly different it is. And here's another one, no ve, and this one has a ve. So let's quickly go over what ve's are. This is linked in the description if you want to read it yourself, but I'm going to just summarize it. Ve is a partial update to Stable Diffusion 1.4 and 1.5 models. So if you're running 2.0 or 2.1, you don't need it. It stands for Variational Auto Encoder. Whatever. I do know you will need to know what VEs are in the future because artificial intelligence stuff is replacing jobs in the future and you want to know how to get a job either programming it or at the very least prompt engineering, which is just typing prompts. And you might have options that you have to change at your job because I've seen VEs referred to in other AI not just image generation. You don't need to install a VAGE or Unstable Diffusion. Any models you use, whether it be 1, version 2, or custom, already have a default VA. But I'm going over this because I had problems with my image generations. It says here, an improved VA decodes the image better from the latent space. Fine details are better recovered. It helps render eyes and text where fine details matter. I haven't done text, but I've seen it on eyes. So now we're going to talk about downloading VAs and what folder you put them in. There are two vase that I use for all my image generation because they seem to take care of everything. So I'm going to start you with that. If you want to add other vase and try them yourself, that's cool. The first one's called SD Vay FT MSE Original. Obviously, the links are in the descriptive thingy below. I'm already on the Files and Versions tab. Hit Download. And in your Stable Diffusion folder, you want to go to Stable Diffusion Models VAE. See, that one's already in there, .safe tensors. And the other one's called grapefruit, download, and that's a .pt file. See that? This other anything one, that's another one I tried before. Don't worry about that one. Basically, this SDVFT MSC original, I use it on all my realistic generations. And the grapefruit one, I use it on all my anime or animated whatever, those generations. Now, in this next step, I'm going to show you how to... Configure Stable Diffusion to let you choose which vey you want. So you're going to go over to your Settings tab. So once in your Settings tab, you have to decide which way you want to do it. The automatic one, which was not working for me during my troubleshooting and figuring this out. So don't use that one. So you can have it always choose a specific one, or you can have it to where you have a drop-down so you can choose it before you generate your image. First way I'm going to show you is the always have the same one method. So in the settings tab, you go over to Stable Diffusion on the left here, click that, and you'll have this option here that says SDVE. So obviously, this will not populate with options unless you load Stable Diffusion after you download those VE files. So let's say, for example, I only generated anime stuff. I would choose Grapefruit for this one, and then hit Apply Settings, and then hit Reload UI. Now I'm going to show you how to configure Stable Diffusion to let you have a drop-down so you can choose it for each thing you generate. In your settings tab, you're going to want to go down and choose user interface and then look for something called quick settings list. I have three options in there. SD model checkpoint, clip stop at last layers, and SD vey. 
You could pause the video now and type this out, or you could just look in the description and watch it for those three options. Those are the three options right there, what it does. Why I have to clip skip there is in case I use someone else's generation data that I found on Civit AI, and they have it set to a clip skip. I want to be able to try that one and other clip skips. But this video isn't about that. You can actually set up this to where you only have the SD model checkpoint and the SD SDVay, which would only give you this and this, and you would just basically put it like this in that box. Now on some versions of Stable Diffusion, you won't be able to just type these in. You'll start typing one of the things, and then a drop-down thing will appear and you'll have to click each option individually. See here, this is what it looks like on this computer. So say for example, I only wanted model checkpoint and vay. SD underscore VAE, that. There you go. Now, as always, you apply settings and reload UI. If you're trying to make these settings up here change, and after reloading the UI, they do not change, you want to go to your console of running Stable Diffusion, hit Control C, and then it's going to ask you, do you want to stop? And hit yes, which type Y, hit enter, and then load it again, and close and reopen the browser. All right, now a short demonstration about how to use them. I've got this image I downloaded from Civit AI off of the Realistic Vision page. Link in the descriptor what's it's obviously. I've already downloaded a couple images from Civit AI so that I can use their prompt generation data. So I'm going to click here. Here's the one that I got from the model called Realistic Vision. Obviously, links to the two models that I'm testing in this video will be in the description below. It all looks good here. Hit send a text to image. And they're using a LoRa that I don't have. And I'm not going to go looking it up because a lot of people are learning how to make these recently on Civit AI, and I plan on doing that for my next video. I'm going to teach myself how to make LoRa's and make a video on that. Let's use the Aubrey Plaza embedding that I, I've made but when I was learning how to do embeddings. If you want to learn how to do embeddings, you can click here boop, to see my previous video. And I'm going to hit generate for that. Actually, I'm going to change this to none. So you can see what the no ve looks like. And now I'm going to do the grapefruit one which, like I said before, is typically best for animated stuff, but we're going to see how it affects a realistic image. And here we go with the one that's intended to be used with realistic models. So here's Nove, here's the Grapefruit one, and here's FT whatever it is, 840,000. So look at that difference between the Grapefruit and that one. So let's just compare that one to None, None, and that one. I don't see much of a difference in that generation. Let's so let's try it with none and turn on high res and do faces for the option. If you want to learn how I got this particular upscaler, you want to go a couple videos ago about how to get ready to do embeddings. I talk about a few of those. You can click that video right here. Let's give that 10 steps. 0.5, generate. All right, here is with no ve, and there's with a ve. If you could see, I'm gonna zoom in just by clicking the plus button since it's a big enough image. Look at it, look like this pixelization going on. It's a lot clearer with the ve. So now let's try an animated one. Grab this picture I grabbed off of Civit AI. Send here, and again, they're using a lore I don't have. So in this case, let's put Amber Mid Thunder in there. That's the one I actually trained in that video where I teach you guys how to do an embedding. All right, let's generate that. Oops, I forgot to change the model. So obviously, I'm going to use the same model as the example I saw in Stable Diffusion, lol, which is Mistune Anime. Again, linked in the description. All right, it's generating right now with no vey. It made this really nice image, but let's see if we can make it better. Changes to Grapefruit and hit generate. That already looks a lot brighter. So for funsies, let's try the one that's meant for realistic generations. So here we go. Nove, grapefruit, and the one that's meant for realistic stuff. It's even brighter. Huh. So you might even choose to use that one on some of your anime stuff. So now let's try this generation with highres.fx. And in this case, I'm going to choose the upscaler to be R that Urgan 4X Anime 6B, whatever that is. Change this to none first. Generate. Oh, by the way, while well, I'm waiting for that, see how I have clip skip set to one? 
that's the default if you don't choose clip skip but since I'm using this individual's generation data it has clip skip 2 down here and if I wanted to get rid of the 2 I'd have to hit this X and take it off and if I did not have this up here I wouldn't be able to try 2 again or 3 the most common that I've seen are 1, 2, and 3 by the way alright here we go upscaled here's Nove here's Grapefruit and here's the 840,000 one I think at least in my opinion for this model with this prompt I would actually choose the 840,000 one for these generations however usually I get better results from anime using grapefruit which is that one do a little bit of zoom in look at it's doing the spots around the eyes spots over here so that's what I was talking about earlier and the spots are gone so much better and this one oh might, it might be too bright. Tell me what you think. Which ve was better on this image generation. Anyways, you guys make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to figure out how to make Laura's. In the previous video I already mentioned, I figured out how to make embeddings. And I made the video as short as possible, showing you everything I figured out, how to avoid the pitfalls, and it took 45 minutes. But the end game goal for me is to have embeddings and Laura's and figure out how to combine them. But I gotta figure out how to do Laura's first. So stay tuned for that video. If you haven't installed Stable Diffusion yet, click this video. I'll teach you how to install it. If you just generally want more information about how to use Stable Diffusion, watch this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, like seriously, you've watched this video all the way up to now? You could subscribe, it's right there. And do the bell thingy or it won't notify you. Alright, bye.